So where did we move our farm to? Well, the land that we're starting our new farm on is actually uh, an abandoned Dukabor village. Yes, and we're actually standing in the foundation. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so this is one of the foundations of one of the buildings in the village. And there is very little evidence left yeah. um, of what was once actually a thriving village here. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this video, we're going to start digging a little bit into the history. And uh, so please come along. After a while, they start building a school. Overnight, it burned down. Really? Yeah. They Before we start digging into the recent history, I just want to acknowledge that uh, we are in the Kutunaha traditional territories now and we are uh, very uh, blessed to be here. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, But for uh, this video, we want to dig into the recent history. So what happened to the Dukubors? Yeah, well, in uh, this, this land here was purchased in 1912 by the Dukubors when they were still living in Saskatchewan. Um, they started several communal villages in the area. Mm. Yeah. And we saw some photos uh, with um, some community members shared with us. Mm -hmm. And from the photos, it's really clear that the Dukubors were really great at building. Yes. They have absolutely beautiful buildings uh, that they were living in, but they had also many other um, uh, buildings in the village. And the layout of the village also is surprisingly mm -hmm. organized and well thought of. Mm -hmm. uh, so this whole place was a community of several villages and they were laid out really nicely. And all the space in between was packed. It was mm -hmm. totally packed full of fruit trees and shrubs and different annuals that they were growing. Yeah. Grasses. And, yeah, yeah. They, for, the and for the cows. Yeah. Um, so we, uh, we really wanted to find more information about how they lived here. It, it was a thriving community yeah. here. Oh, we were very lucky that my Toto Basunya, or my Auntie Wendy, um, knew some people who knew people. <laughs> and she uh, put us in touch with um, John Kolesnikov, who was born here in Blahadatne in 1927 and, and grew up here, met his wife and got married and, and lived here. So we're very excited uh, when we uh, we're put in touch with him and, and um, had the opportunity to talk with him. Do you remember the buildings? What kind of buildings did you live in? The dome. The dome? Oh, we lived in those big, big buildings that they made for... And like, you can see a building here. Oh, yeah, yeah, have photos! Aha. Oh, wow. Oh. Big, big building. Oh, okay. So those are the residences. Residential, over yeah. here. Which one was your village? Did yours have a certain name, or were they all were they all Blahadatne, or did you have certain names? No, there's all Blahadatne. All from the here. Uh huh. Ah. Here it comes. Right. It was yours? That was yours? No, oh, Zebrafs. Zebrafs. Ah. Oh. And then, I looked for that. Another, was a village here before. The big buildings burned down those days. Really? And they were just smaller buildings they stayed in that time. Okay. So neat to be able to go back in time with John and um, ask him the, a few questions. Um, mm. One thing that I found really cool was um, was his story. He had um, made his own boat um, to be able to uh, leave Blahadatni and get to the other side of the river. So there is a, there was a road in and out, but it was a long road and um, you need to go by horseback or by foot. 
So the faster, easier way was to cross the Columbia River. But that's no easy feat. The Columbia River is a big, strong river, like it's and it's not a small, not a small task. So um, to be able to actually cross, you have to go upstream. Especially again, no motors. You had to all paddle by oh, hand, no. right? You have to go upstream this huge, mighty Columbia River to end up at the point that you want to downstream. So yeah, he had built a, a boat by hand um, out of a log and uh, a, a big one, a big boat yeah. um, with two paddles. And they, they used that to cross the river, which I thought was really cool. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I also was really amazed that um, when he said, nobody in the village actually kept guns. And I think that's because of the beliefs that the Dukubos have. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, living here, you you know, one of the first reaction could be like, oh, okay, we, you know, we, in nature, it's wild, we might need guns. And I think the guns were extremely common at that time uh, for the settlers to have mm. many guns. And uh, for them not to use it, uh, it was really interesting, but um, that was really cool. And I, I really wonder also how that affect the relationship. And uh, so we want to, uh, with others, with other communities mm-hmm. at that time. So we, we would like to dig more into that history and see, uh, you know, find out what happened. It's Very really, much. really neat. Yeah. I also, you know, and we know that dairy was such a large um, portion of a Dukabor diet back then because mm. they were vegetarian. It still surprised me that he said that when they, when he got married, um, they received a cow uh, for milk. And still, you know, it, it wasn't even that long ago again. Mm. Um, but it still surprised me that... Um, that they did that, and they they saved a portion of their um, the area for to grow hay for the cows and and keep them for milk. So yeah, that still surprised me again. And and so yeah, it, it's just comforting to know that we're doing the same as well with Heidi and Mina, because yeah. we're, we're trying to follow that. that it same. seems like we're on the right track. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They do to... produce a lot of food for us. Yeah, so which is that's great. for sure. So yeah, um, that was really cool. Yeah. Speaking of food, um, uh-huh. yeah, I just wanted to share my favorite food this week because we've been <laughs> we've been eating we've been eating tons of berries first of all yeah. on the walks. I know you've been going even on more walks than me. Yeah. But, but, so what berries are out there now? Well, the first ones that came out were Saskatoons, of course. Um, a lot of people are familiar with Saskatoons. Uh, they usually ripen mid June, and then soon after, we actually stumbled across the black raspberries. Um, mm, in especially delicious. in the higher, yeah, yeah, the higher rockier areas, we we had black raspberry and the thimbleberries. Thimble yeah. Another common one. People seem to to um, just you know cast aside. They don't put much credit yeah, to not it. Not many people know about thimbleberries. No, they're so very good. very yeah. good. So they're the delicious. ones that are now ripening fast. So. Yeah. Yeah, we've been every time we go for a dip in the creek, um, we eat our way back. So <laughs> yeah, well, I save a little bit and uh, I use it uh, in my breakfast. So yeah. for breakfast, I make uh, oatmeal with um, a lot of Saskatoons in it, and it's been really, really delicious with the fresh milk and oatmeal and Saskatoons. It's like best breakfast it. ever. Yeah, <laughs> it's really delicious. So our interview with John got us really fired up and just got us really excited to learn more information. So mm. we're hoping to uh, visit John again and get a bit more information and also visit the Dukabor Discovery Center that's located here in Castlegar. Um, we're hoping to visit that and just get any more information we can about the area and um, yeah, and the Dukabors. And if you know any source of information that mm-hmm. could shed some light about what happened, we have so many questions that Photos. we want to learn. Yeah, yeah. We just want to learn how they were doing things here in this village and how they were growing things and all those questions about living here sustainably yes. off the land and especially in winter yeah, yeah we yeah, have so many really, questions about winter yeah. <laughs> it, it, it just boils our mind yeah. uh, there's such a big village here and they were working all together um, with very little access to the mainland yeah. they had to cross the river to get mm-hmm. there and no electricity here nothing yeah. so yeah we have tons of questions so yeah. please uh, put, put us in touch with anyone yes, you think please. that can help us and yeah, yeah, I think we should wrap it up here. Yeah. Thank you so much, Thank you. everyone, for watching another update from us. And uh, please stay tuned. And feel free to share this video. Yes. It really helps us uh, and get other people who are interested to join us on our journey. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
bagi smiley